I worked for a long time in neonatal intensive care. So I was looking after uh, premature babies, um, you know, some of whom were, were born into the most precarious uh, medical and health circumstances that you could imagine. Um, and there was a lot of tragedy uh, in, in that. Um, and I saw, I saw a lot and experienced a lot. Um, but uh, tonight, as I'm sitting here talking to you, um, my 15-year-old son is actually at the, uh, the test match in, in Adelaide with a good mate of his who I actually nursed as a premature baby. Wow. Um, and so his, uh, his, I've, I've had the pleasure of, uh, of reconnecting with uh, not only him, um, the patient that I looked after as a, as a, as a baby, but his mum and dad, who I know quite well. Um, and to see him thrive and flourish the way he has, um, you know, and, and to know that, you know, he's, he's at the cricket with my son, um, you know, that, that fills me with something mm. really, you know, that, you know, it fills me with uh, a sense of pride, um, sense of, you know, happiness, um, at which... You know where does that come from? So you know, doesn't doesn't just come from nowhere. I, I suppose it's that old the the thing of you know, you've got a problem of evil, but you've also got a problem of good in a sense that that you cut this this kind of this fact that we do sense that there are things that are really good in the world that mm. there are re you know things to be celebrated, things that give us meaning and purpose and so on. Where, where do you want to take this, Dan? Just be interested in your response to some some of these, you know, the, the, this experience that that Dean has had. Yeah, man, I really appreciate that insight. And, uh, you know, to know that the boys are at the cricket watching the UK team get absolutely <laughs> dominated again is just really warming while we're in this conversation with Justin. Yeah, yeah. But I reckon the hardest, the hardest place I've ever had to speak to the theme of suffering was to a medical staff at a hospital up in Singapore. Because it's, it's one thing to speak to people's individual and personal experience. And it's another thing to make sense of these questions in light of those who wade in intense suffering day in, day out so often that they become numb to it in mm. many cases. Mm. And so I really just appreciate your honesty. And, and more than that, I appreciate what you did. Someone like you sat beside my mum's bed for weeks and weeks and weeks and nursed her through those really dark times. So thank you for what you do. Wow, but I, I think you were also touching on that there are these depths to human experience that if we want to take God out of the picture, which at face value may answer the intellectual problem of suffering posed by Epicurus and all skeptics since him, it does get rid of that one problem, namely the Christian contradiction of an all powerful and all loving God with, uh, with what we see in the world. But you bump into an entirely new mm. problem, which is the evilness of evil and the wrongness of suffering. Because on the naturalist story, it's very hard to account for the evilness of evil, that this isn't just a sliding scale with time and culture and evolutionary psychology and sociological groups, but that some things really are evil, but also the wrongness of mm. suffering. I remember seeing mum when you walked into that ICU, there were six beds in there and I couldn't tell because of the bandages and the bruising, which one of those six ladies was mum. And there was something that felt so percussive and painful about that experience. And then when you see Stephen Fry rightly say, what's up with bone cancer in children? You know, as he's decrying yeah. suffering before God, it makes, it makes sense because it feels wrong to us. But ejecting God from the world story only takes away the wrongness of suffering as well, because on naturalism, it's just how things have always been, how they're meant to be. There's no other ought to the system. And yet the Christian story to me, it actually answers beautifully that deep intuition that this is not the way that things should be, that something has gone wrong in how human beings are experiencing the world as God intended for us to. For more conversations between Christians and skeptics, subscribe to the Unbelievable podcast. And for more updates and bonus content, sign up to the Unbelievable newsletter.